Well, happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here on this uh, 11th of May, day before Mother's Day weekend here. Again, in case you missed it or hiding on a rock here, you probably saw that there were thousands of reports of the auroras that uh, were widespread, just a near historic event here all the way down to Puerto Rico, Florida. Thousands of reports. In fact, uh, yours truly here is in the spaceweather.com report of the auroras that we saw last night here around actually early this morning, 3.30 to 4.30, which was just a uh, Pretty epic by our standards here in eastern Pennsylvania. So uh, purple and uh, green shaded uh, thing again, and uh, completely visible with the naked eye. Again, it um, didn't need much to see these again. So uh, despite the, even a little bit of light pollution, so it's uh, uh, certainly epic by eastern PA standards. And again, I know the folks down in Florida and Puerto Rico were uh, equally impressed with this uh, widespread event. Even our WT360 weather cam, hard to see here, but this green glow here again with some of the. Earlier morning, 3 a.m., uh, green auroras didn't capture the reds that we saw here in uh, a little further north of this, uh, maybe because of the fog. But uh, again, the clouds broke just in time for us to witness this historic event. And basically, it's uh, six CMEs, coronal mass ejections, a uh, mass that's just leaving the sun. Again, we're in a peak, nearing the peak of solar cycle 25, not quite there yet. But um, again, so one of the strongest clusters, again, six of them, uh, CMEs to hit in 21 years. It was a G5 level storm. And again, basically, a nice animation here from NASA just basically shows that it gets funneled down into the uh, protection of the Earth's uh, magnetic field. Again, it pummels it down toward the North Pole, but when it's really intense like this, you just get a lot of energy, and those auroras can leave uh, the Arctic and head uh, hell way down into the uh, mid-latitude. So that's, again, what happened here last night. And we're not out of the woods here yet. Again, um, Elon Musk has been complaining about what this is doing to maybe some of his Starlink satellites. Um, so again, off the scale here, again, I think what's making this, NASA's even suggesting this could be a 500-year event just with the longevity of these uh, six CMEs. Um, so again, you see here hour after hour after hour of just the intense uh, G4, G5 um, storm here. So again, it continues to be about an 8.3. We'll see if it lulls here, but again, expecting more here throughout the weekend. So if you have clear skies, look to your northern hemisphere, northern skyline, and um, usually around midnight, after midnight, but who knows? With this intense, it could be any time after dark. So again, certainly um, KP9 is what we've been in, and again, this was way further south than what historically would say would go from Virginia to northern California, but uh, again, we saw them in Florida and Puerto Rico. Um, Again, 103 years since they saw one of these. So again, uh, KP9, and uh, again, all the way south to about 18 degrees latitude. So again, solar cycle 25 here is um, probably going to peak latent here in 2024, early 2025. And again, but it's not off the scale. And we've seen much, much worse uh, solar activity back in solar cycle, back in the 1955, early 1961 event. So again, that's pre-satellite. So again, if we had anything like that here um, in this era, again, it could pre uh, pretty much havoc uh, on uh, any electronics and power grids and satellites. Um, so we'll see, again, uh, another active probably at least year of uh, this solar activity. Activity is off the scale here now for tornadoes. We're now the most in 13 years. WTI warned about this uh, a year in advance to all our big clients that it would be an intense year after a pretty active year last year. But we're off the scale right now. We added 153 tornadoes, obviously just a uh, a lot of destruction and death, unfortunately. 526 hail events, 902 wind events. All three categories are now uh, above average, but uh, again, tornadoes are certainly taking the uh, top bucket here in terms of the most in 13 years. Uh, and sadly, that trend is going to continue here, unfortunately, in the next couple of weeks. Looking at U.S. drought again, making a big improvement here again, as expected. Also talked about this a year ahead uh, with our farmers. Um, only 35% of the country now in dry to drought phases versus last year, 45%. So we continue to plummet. That's uh, below average. So it's the wettest in four years, least drought in four years, seventh wettest in 24 years. So again, going in the right direction. Again, um, maybe expanding a bit in the southwest, but again, overall, not a drought-type cycle for the U.S., at least not yet. That may change here late this year. Um, last week, world summer here, week ending 11 May, ending today here. Here in the U.S., 1.5, 1.4 colder than last year, ninth warms in 39 years. Uh, cold spots would be um, a little misleading here because we've had a we had a really warm week here in the northeast, um, but then a freezing cold, horrible. It's the coldest in 14 years here in the northeast for this Mother's Day weekend. So it's a little flip flop pattern. So warm midweeks, but cold stormy weekends. 38 percent wetter than last year. Wet is in five years. Fourth wet is in 39 years. So cool wet, not real great for retail seasonal sales. Uh, bright spots probably UK. UK was warmer, drier. Uh, so good news there. That's what we like to see. Is warmer, drier is typically more favorable for seasonal sales, store traffic. Uh, frigid in Russia, uh, cold is in 25 years. There was snow in Moscow. Again, crazy cold there. So, again, overall the number one wettest globally in 39 years. And unfortunately, this trend continues here. 
This week, uh, ending 18 May here, here in the U.S., 0.8 cooler than last year. Cool's in three years. Still seventh warmest in 39 years. But, uh, again, this weekend's off-the-scale cold here in the east. Uh, cold's in 14 years. Number one wettest in 139 years. So 102% wetter than last year. So, again, see all this signature here of uh, you know central Kansas, Missouri, uh, deep south, southeast here. Another, unfortunately, potential for severe weather outbreaks. Uh, again, more tornadoes, hail, and wind. Um, Severe Storm Forecast Center pretty much uh, shows that, uh, again, expanding scenario across the, the south. And, again, this may eventually expand also up into the central plains as we go out through the week. Look at next week. Hard to believe we're saying this, but the week prior to Memorial Day here, um, it's uh, a little bit better news, a little bit. <laughs> 1.4 warmer than last year, warmest in three years, seventh warmest in 39 years. So warmer trends are good for retail sales. So the south and east, again, uh, east coast definitely looks uh, more favorable for uh, spring seasonal sales. Uh, unfortunately wet again 74 percent wetter than last year 11th was in 39 years so above average rainfall again all that heavy rain there in the heartland uh, again uh, heartland Ohio valley tennessee valley uh, into the mid-atlantic so that's a severe weather signature when you see that cold weather coming into the um, you know the upper midwest plains cold clashing with warm is just not what you want to see here so again another potentially very disastrous uh, week here as we get into the memorial day weekend and again this is just Playing havoc with consumers. Again, their mindset's on a lot of things, and this is the last thing uh, retailers want to see. Uh, world two-week outlook here, so just aggregating these trends. Uh, overall, again, warm across North America, South America, well, Brazil, uh, very cold there in uh, Argentina, uh, continued cold there in Russia, warm in Central Europe. If we look at these rainfall trends here, again, pretty wet. Again, uh, so it's a typical. We got a volcano that blew up uh, in the ocean a couple years ago and uh, waning El Nino. Again, just tons and tons of moisture in the atmosphere, and it's eventually just got to precipitate itself out. Unfortunately, that can take um, three, four, five, six plus years when you had a volcano do what it did here back in January. So, with that, folks, we hope you have a great Mother's Day weekend despite the weather here. I took the one of the perks of being a meteorologist is you know when to take the. Mrs. Catherine Kirk and little Angelina Kirk uh, to their favorite place, the Longwood Gardens here to see the beautiful flowers. And um, again, it was a, a beautiful day here, Saturday here this morning. So can, uh, they had a great time down there. And again, uh, tomorrow it'll be pretty rainy and cold. So with that, folks, we hope you have a, a great week ahead here. And uh, talk to you this time next week.